Okay, so today's episode, we're doing things a little bit differently. Uh, today's episode is going to be themed around stealth. Now, if you've been playing Warframe for a while, you might know that stealth gameplay isn't super valuable in 2019 Warframe. Don't get me wrong, it's still strong and there's still a lot you can do with it, but it's not quite as valuable as it used to be because the landscape of Warframe has changed so much since then. That intro segment was a little bit of a joke, but I do hear from newer players now and then that expected to have a more prominent stealth gameplay experience when jumping into the game, only to find that their stealth experience was full forced to a halt by other players, new and veteran alike, that were more in tune with the faster paced gameplay that Warframe has come to demand. Uh, sure, a player wanting to enjoy a stealth gameplay experience can just queue up solo, and many do, but I don't feel like that's an adequate solution to the lack of reward for the extra effort that stealth gameplay requires, and a player that dedicates themselves to that kind of play will ultimately be putting themselves behind a player that can move from mission to mission more quickly. You're a ninja, but you know, being ninja-like is a really drastic hindrance, and on a lot of levels, fixing that would require core level changes to the gameplay experience, not just scaling rewards for stealth gameplay. For example, buffing XP gains on unalerted enemies means buffing loot cave methods of XP farming like a Daro. Fixing this would require fundamental changes to how Warframe works, and I know that there are a lot of players that would not appreciate dev time being invested into aspects of the game that could threaten or change their preferred method of play. Just about any change to the game does come with some risk, but they obviously can't mess up in an already good thing. So, just really quickly, I'd like to take you guys on a short journey to an earlier time in Warframe when what we had for stealth really did work better than it ever has with enemy scaling and room clearing and the things that Warframe is today. I'm going to talk about Naramon Shadow Step. <laughs> now, I know a lot of you that have been playing for a very long time just had a heart attack. Shadow Step isn't what I think anyone would say counted towards stealth gameplay, but I have a point. I'm getting to it, I promise. Now, if you're pretty new to Warframe, Shadow Step used to be a focus node in the Naramon tree that made it so that whenever you landed a critical hit with a melee weapon, you went invisible for 10 seconds. This duration was refreshed every time it was triggered, so it was super easy to maintain. Since it wasn't a Warframe power, it also wasn't dispelled by nullifier bubbles. The only downside was that you had to wait about 5 minutes for your focus school to charge up before you could use it, but once you did that, it was available for the rest of the mission. If any of this sounds broken, it was. It was broken. Very, very broken. There were so many different ways that this node could be used. It basically allowed you to get permanent invisibility on any frame. And the crazy part about it was that there was no middle ground. There was no need to min-max for it or drastically change your build or playstyle in any way to make consistent use of it. It was either on and you had easy access to permastealth and it was broken, or it was off and you just weren't using it. Okay, so anyway, Shadow Step is gone. Removed with Focus 2.0. Why am I bringing it up? Well, because lately, it seems like Warframe has been undergoing this really interesting trend where the devs are getting more and more bold, more adventurous about what power they're willing to give us, and I think that's a really amazing change. We get a crazy amount of power strength and weapon damage from arbitrations that can also be really game-breaking. Lately, we've gotten hunter munitions, and you just the hunter set in general is really good. We've gotten adaptation and rolling guard and power donation, all things which open up really interesting new build possibilities, and with the upcoming Warframe Hildren, they're going to be testing the waters with shield gating. Now, these are all things that, honestly, I probably wouldn't have considered would ever make their way into Warframe, and some things that can cause some really insane amount of power in niche use cases in the game. The point I'm trying to get at is that I wouldn't be surprised if, eventually, we get a reintroduction of a mechanic somewhat like Shadow Step, but more metered or less broken, maybe with a lower duration or a duration that requires player effort to scale up to some Something that's usable, maybe something a little harder to access that does require a bit of playstyle or build modification to make use of with any sense of reliability. I'm saying that just maybe by revisiting some of the older mechanics that worked well but were maybe a bit too black and white, applying some new via media solutions could help contribute to systems of play that are more rewarding for those that prefer something outside of the usual horde slaughter meta. Like, you know, you know, stealth. Maybe we could get a mod or an arcane or something where getting a kill or a headshot on an unalerted enemy could grant invisibility for a duration based on overkill damage, letting the player move through missions and focus on surgical precision kills to maintain that buff. How rad? How rad would that be? Just just throwing that out there. Just a fun little fun little what if. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is that I'm excited to see how much Warframe has been branching out and trying new things, and I just wanted to toss out a little reminder that hey, you know, stealth would be cool. I'm sure it's it's on the back burner somewhere because I'm sure that it would require some pretty low-level changes, but I'm also pretty sure that it's not a very popular uh, way 
to play, nor really should it be with the rewards the way they are, but if that's something that we could maybe, you know, just kind of keep in the back of our minds, start taking strides toward that a little bit, that would be really cool. Just throwing that out there, that'd be pretty neat. Anyway, I've been going on for a little too long with this little rant or uh, video essay. Kind of, same thing, kind of. Let's, uh, let's, let's move, let's move on here. <laughs> now it's time for an unpopular opinion. To enhance endurance runs, Kuva Survival should have a stealth requirement. This means that if you break stealth, a Kuva Catalyst will not drop for the next five minutes. You just watched Xenogillion giving an unpopular opinion. Brought to you by Xenric Brand Energy Soda. Get energized. Are you guys ready for this? Oh man, with last week, now bring you the second episode? This means a lot to me. Wait, where am I? Oh yeah, of course. Here I am. You know, today, we're talking stealth. Alright, two minutes, let's go. So today's topic is stealth, more particularly stealth in Warframe. Now I know what you're thinking, but Michelle, isn't stealth not very useful in anything but spy? Wait, hold on there, you've never seen me do a spy mission. No, honestly, I would mostly agree with you that Warframe makes it super simple to play loud in the open with your SAR and your Cold Star. But let me tell you about the absolute power of finding just a little bit more subtle. In general, except for the infestation corrupted, enemies can be in three different states. In the first state, they're relaxed, drinking coffee, they don't even have an idea that you're there. In the second state, they're just a little bit on edge, and in the third state, they're shooting bullets at you. At which point, well, they've probably seen you. Now in stealth gameplay, we want them to be as relaxed as possible. To do that, you can take up something with invisibility, like a Loki or an Ash. Because when you're not seen, your melee damage is increased by 20% per level of that weapon. In short, if I'm in stealth mode with a rank 30 uh, saw, it will do 700% damage. Now that's neat, isn't it? That's what we call stealth damage. Not to be confused with stealth attack damage, which gives you an even bigger damage boost when you perform a finisher like this. So how are we going to make use of that bonus? Let me introduce you to Hush's Invisibility. This mod for Loki silences any weapon you use whilst you are invisible. So yeah, even your Star and Call Star will be completely silent. In order to make full use of this, we want to get all the duration we can get on Loki. There. Add on Hushed Invisibility. Whoop. And then we're going to make sure that we get our energy situated too. With Coaction Drift, we're going to increase the amount of energy we get from Energy Siphon, while Streamline cuts our casting cost to 35 energy. With this setup, you will be invisible for 36 seconds, and in that time you will regenerate 30 energy. So you lose out on about 5 energy per cast, but if you use Cenerik or pick up an orb once in a while, you should be fine to go invisible for the entire mission. Now honestly, this loadout is just a bit of fun. You can actually use it, but I wouldn't recommend it for your dailies. That being said, I hope you learned something today about the power of stealth. Make sure you use it whenever you can, and I will see you all next week. Welcome to our tip of the week. My name is Zandy Pants. You can call me Zandy. And today, behold, we're going to talk a little bit about stealth mechanics. Yeah, stealth doesn't really have anything to do with my enjoyment of this game. I'm not the person to ask about alertness levels and exactly how silent weapons work and all that stuff. I'm not into it. I have some cursory knowledge, but it's just not for me. I do find it fascinating that we have stealth-like objectives in a game where our characters are these unstoppable war machines that can annihilate entire armies of enemies without taking a scratch. And to be fair, because of that, Warframe stealth objectives often focus on the vulnerability of the person or thing that we are trying to save or capture, rather than us. That works, but it does mean that stealth-type missions are often still best approached with speed and power, like in rescue missions where you can get the squishy rescue target to teleport further to you and away from danger if you run away from them and to extraction fast enough. Even so, stealth-related mechanics are something that everyone can take advantage of, largely because of the stealth damage multiplier. This allows you to deal 8 times your outgoing damage with melee attacks dealt while enemies are unaware of you, which well, okay, so unaware of you means 
let's say they're blinded, so maybe Excalibur's Radio Blind, now they take stealth damage. And you can also get the stealth damage multiplier if enemies don't know where you are, or you're untargetable, I guess. So I'll deploy my Zenistar Disc, you see normal damage, and now... Crazy Pants damage. And you know that you're getting the stealth damage multiplier because the damage numbers turn yellow, like crits, like that. Which, okay, that's, yes, that's confusing too. You also know because your damage will get really crazy. For whatever reason, melee weapons that are below max rank get less of the stealth damage multiplier, which is pretty random, but important to know when leveling them up. And you also have to be careful not to physically touch enemies with your frame, as that temporarily turns off the stealth damage multiplier. Another thing that triggers stealth damage multipliers is, well, obviously stealth. If you're invisible, then you get the stealth damage multiplier. But there are a few things to note. First of all, this is the way where you care the most about not touching enemies. You have to be careful not to touch them or you'll lose the multiplier temporarily. And second of all, if they survive the first hit, they'll become aware of your weapon poking into their back and stop taking stealth damage multipliers. So you see on this bombard, I did kill it with the second hit, but it didn't have the stealth damage multiplier, it was a normal white damage number. Quick Warframe history factoid. A few years ago, the stealth damage multiplier would apply itself again for things like slash procs that look at the damage value you dealt to determine their base damage. So you'd get 64 times damage on stealth slash procs, which was, you know, just a game-crushing amount of damage. Almost as scary as stealth gas procs, which triple dipped and gained 512% damage from the stealth damage multiplier due to their multi-stage damage calculation formula. To be crystal clear, this does not happen anymore with the stealth damage multiplier, but the last time I checked, faction damage multipliers still behaved that way. Make sure to check yourself, since things like this change all the time. What actually turns on the stealth damage multiplier is pretty inconsistent. Many things that open enemies to finishers, or make enemies inactive, turn it on, but not all of those things have that functionality and why which is which is completely beyond me. Generally, I think that the best way to use stealth is as a damage multiplier. For example, as I showed before, when you're using Excalibur's Exalted Blade, you can use his blinding abilities like Radial Blind, Radial Howl, or the Slide Attack when you have Exalted Blade out, to blind your enemies and greatly increase the damage of your blade waves. This changed my life when I learned about it, it's so much more damage. One of my favorite uses is with Ivara. You can use Prowl and Navigator together with the Zenistar Disc to control it while stealth and fly the damaging field around for spicy damage in a, let's say, generous area. It does take a lot of energy, but it's a really weird, fun way to do the index and stuff like that. I've been Zandy and you've been Dandy. And I hope you're now very stealthy while you're dealing massive damage. Thanks for tuning in to our tip of the week. Now, on with the show. Okay, so this is going to be a bit more quick of a review than usual, because today we're reviewing a really solid, straightforward weapon, the Baza. This is, after all, an episode about stealth, so... You know, we might as well go with the rifle. But before you roll your eyes, the Baza's special mechanic is that it's a silent submachine gun, meaning that it does not alert nearby enemies whenever it's fired. However, it does also have some pretty nasty falloff, which, if you like, can be remedied with a bit of flight speed via Rivens or abilities like Zephyr's Turbulence. This is where I was going to put in a, a clip from uh the, from Ghost in the Shell, but I can't because of copyright issues, so I'm just... HV ammo in a submachine. Since this is a silent weapon, it has some interesting sound design, which, you know, I've heard a lot of players say they don't like it. I've heard a lot of players say they do. As always, I encourage you to form your own opinions. But anyway, this weapon, it's really quite good. It's got some great fire rate, some pretty solid accuracy, and some decent crit stats. I run this with a viral hunter munitions build, and with the slash procs, it's plenty enough to kill those high level armored enemies in one clip, assuming that you stand close and can reasonably aim for the head. But this weapon is also really solid for lower level star chart stuff as well, without much of a change to your typical playstyle. Finally, it is worth mentioning that this build interacts incredibly well with environments with 100% armor strip as well. Just delete! Anyway, I'd say this is a really solid rifle overall. Some people have said this is just kind of a worse Soma, and I'm... Um, uh, 
uh, I don't really disagree, but also I, this weapon has its own strengths. So I'd say this is totally worth the forma if you want to invest in it. Four out of five. Bam. Uh, if you guys can't tell, I've been primarily trying to show off some of the stronger, you know, like more worthwhile weapons recently. But anyway, as usual, make sure to let me know down in the comments section what weapons you guys would like to see covered as well. And we'll see if we can't take a look at an upcoming episode. If everything goes according to plan, I should be almost out of like stored up weapon reviews. So I'm going to be picking a couple more for the next batch. So make sure to let me know. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I know this episode was a little bit different. We kind of had some last minute changes, but I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you guys had fun watching it. As usual, make sure you check out all of the other creators involved in the creation of this episode. That's Michelle, Zena Gillian, and Zandy Pants. All the links to their channels and social media will be down in the description below. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Also, we have a Discord. You can join our Discord. It's a pretty cool place to be. Also worth mentioning is that on March 16th and 17th, Zena Gillian and I are gonna be doing a stream to raise money for Children's Miracle Network. We're going to be spending 24 hours straight out on Orb Valis. It'd be really awesome if you guys could join us. Anyway, that's it. I hope you had fun. My name is Joey Zero. Okay, bye.